Hi, babes. It's me, Tia Coffee, the queen of the mother tucking world, officially. And welcome to another gorgeous episode of The Final Frontier. Now, my reign has begun after Drag Race UK versus the world, and I could not think of a better first guest to have. She is a singer with a brand new single. She is an actress who fights swans and she's now officially a professional runner-up. It is the icon from Down Under, Hannah Conda. Me and Hannah were singing each other's songs. Heartbreak throw. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. Hi, Miss Anaconda, how are you today? Oh, I am absolutely enthralled to be in your effervescent presence. Oh, stop. I know. We're celebrating you today because you're at Queen. Queen <laughs> of the world. Um, no, we're celebrating you. But I no, feel we're like celebrating you. We're celebrating us. We're celebrating us. The iconic Anton deck of drag. Yes, this is us. Um, hello. Hello, everyone out there in the world. Hi. Hi. For everyone listening at home, I feel like we need to explain the outfits that we're wearing. Hannah, yes. please tell everyone what we are wearing at this moment in time. So today, in celebration of our Queen of the Mother Tucking world, we've decided to go into the archives <laughs> and we have raided some really incredibly iconic pieces high of end, your high-end drag. Archival fashion. Archival fashion. Yep. Um, so today I am wearing um, a figure-hugging... <laughs> What is this? Lip, uh, like, like a vinyl? I don't know. It's like what a vinyl this is. that has been painted to look like a um, prehistoric creature with a, a <laughs> headpiece that is a beak. Um, it looks like a sad like pigeon. A sad pigeon. Sad pigeon. Um, but if you turn it on the side, you look like Theresa May. LA. Her season three entrance look. Yes. It's very that. So there's that. But it is the sad pigeon from season two of UK Drag Race. Boo, 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 boo. And what are you in today, Tia? I am wearing my ice cream cone costume from season two of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, where I infamously sent Joe Black home doing a forwards roll like a seven-year-old in front of RuPaul <laughs> Charles. <laughs> and that made me a lip sync assassin somehow. <laughs> this what? season, less so. No, you, got, you assassinated I did no forwards rolls. Well, no, but you didn't need to because that's it. I'm telling everyone at home, drag comes in many different varieties and just because we don't do physical activities does not mean that a lip sync is bad. Just because we that? like to sit down doesn't mean... <laughs> we, we, that... Our drag is any less valid. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about Drag Race for a second because obviously yeah, this is predominantly a sci-fi podcast and we'll get to that. Yeah, but I, to be fair, it is kind of sci-fi because I'm not sure if when... Lim I think we're living in a simulation. Okay. Uh -uh. I read somewhere that there is like a 40% or a 60% chance that we're already living in a simulation. Yeah. Well, like if you think about it, like in the buildings that we don't see and the things that we don't see like in our current realm, mm. it's it's all buffering. Mama, the Sims. Mama, we are the Sims. The Sims to have. Poppy, um, could you look up the uh, statistic that we're already living in a simulation, please? Thank you. Yeah, shout out to Poppy. That. Yeah, shout out to Poppy. Because it is fascinating. And I think about this. I watched a documentary on YouTube one night. Mm -hmm. well, the docu <laughs> we're yeah. infamously really I watched good. a documentary. I read something on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, if we're ever going to have the technology to be in a simulation, chances are... That simulation's running right now so that the yeah. people of the future can see what world history was. Yeah. And mama, world history was it's... us in the top two of UK versus the world. Exactly. That's why they're running the whole simulation. Exactly. To be like, us. how did they beat Marina? Yeah. <laughs> it's a study. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is just someone's it's queer a... thesis in the year 330 <gasps> million. Yeah. And then this podcast is like us doing their work. Oh my for God. Them. We're a footnote. <gasps> Oh, see, sci-fi. See, sci-fi is everywhere. <sighs> yeah, my mind is blown. Very though. Um. <laughs> well, I asked you a question and I can't remember what it was. Something about Drag Race. Oh, yeah, we were oh, on yeah. Drag Race. Yeah, we were on <laughs> Drag Race. Oh, look, it was pretty good. We had a great time. We laughed. We giggled. We cried. Um, we <laughs> cried. But fundamentally, we did that. We really did. And I'm really proud of us. And I'm so exceptionally proud of you. And, like, being able to stand next to you while you got crowned was joy and a dream. You did that, Mama. We did do that. You did that, Mama. No, I did not expect that outcome necessarily. I can't well, lie. Well, what outcome did you expect? 
I definitely expected a version of events with you having a crown. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> see, see how we, yeah, we circumnavigated yeah. the world yeah. just then. But did you see? I did see. Did you see? Oh my gosh, I have not shown everyone the thing that you're about to say. Can we talk about it? Are we I allowed think, to talk about it? We can talk about it. Because it went to air. It did, and it's all over TikTok. It literally is all over TikTok. Well, I want to say it. I'm too scared. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Well, somewhere... Someone fucked up because they left the subtitles on over the credits of us having a tie. Yeah, no, <laughs> there is a version if you watch the credits. Yeah, where it suddenly says the credits start rolling and then it says it's, it's a, a tie. tie. <laughs> <laughs> You're both winners, baby. Yeah. And then one of us says, "What the fuck?" Are you joking? No, I was like, "Are you, are you joking? joking? Are, you, yeah. are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> are you, is that how I sound? Are you joking?" <laughs> That's not how I said. No, it's <laughs> but yeah, how wild is that? No, but to be fair, I'd like, like, it was win, draw, lose. I was just so honoured to do it and be there with you because you, you represent something very special in drag. Thank you. Represent- High end glamour. <laughs> yeah, I represent <laughs> fashion, uh, dance, dance, yeah, ability. Um, particularly. No, but you know what? We were saying this. I was speaking to Tia on the phone yesterday. But like, it was just like we're bringing fun back to drag, and yeah. like what Drag Race was was fun and meant to be celebrating all different types of drag. And I love that we can, like that final lip sync, we just enjoyed it. It was so silly. It was so it was silly. very silly. I think that's what like some people miss because there is like a version of drag that a lot of people aspire to and it's all, you know, becoming a little homogenous to my taste. I'm not oh. going to call it out, but it's all blending into one um, race. And just, 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 <laughs> Race? just vaguely, <laughs> vaguely brown people wearing human hair wigs. And I feel like we did like silly things. Like who, yeah. Who's had a bottle smashed on their head on no Drag one. Race? No one. And Nobody. I felt like that was, well, you did. You, but you did it to yourself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, but yeah, no, it's, I just think it was like a time for us to be a little bit more joyful and realise that it's not so f- fucking serious. Like we can have fun. We can. And enjoy life a little bit more. And fun fact for those out there in the room watching, we are actually friends and we are celebrating each other and it's okay to have your favourites and you don't need to shit on someone else. And I love tea coffee and she is the winner and I'll take that payment via PayPal after this. Thank you. Also, we're living <laughs> in a simulation. Yeah, we are in a simulation. What a horrifying thought. No, if we were in a oh. simulation, I'd be doing like Rosebud. Like, oh my god, oh, like yeah, on the Sims. Sims. Yeah, getting all that money. Yeah. I mother used to, mother load. That was the that, on the first one it was I think Rosebud and then it was Mother Load. Wasn't it? I think so. Or the other one. way around. They didn't both work on the same one, I think. Poppy, do we have the statistic on Yeah, what's the, that, Poppy? What is the percentage likelihood that we're currently living in a simulation, please, Poppy? Oh, it's fifty uh-huh. fifty. That's worse. It's yes, like being so in the top two of Drag Race. Yes, like, 50, it's, 50. It's, 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 no, we even had more of a chance. It was 75% chance each because there was three outcomes. Allegedly. Alleged. No, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the thing. According to the subtitles. <laughs> Wait, so there's a 50% chance that we're already living in a simulation, which kind of means that we're existing in a sci-fi universe, which basically yeah. means in this sci-fi drag crossover podcast, we have a 50-50 chance that we can talk about whatever we want because it's already sci-fi. Exactly. Slay. So, yeah, and, there, and the outcome is already projected of what will happen, which could be RuPaul flies into this room dressed as a sniper with a gun and shoots me and takes me out before I ruin the mainframe and there's a glitch in the Matrix. Are you writing your own sci-fi drag movie? Yes, I am. Could you imagine RuPaul just flying through going, like you a shall not talk about the third ending, bang! <laughs> and I'll be like, woo! And then it will ricochet off my pigeon beak and then I will have to run around the universe dressed as a Pigeon, and that'll be my look. What do you mean? Because this is your ghost outfit. If you die in this outfit, this is your ghost outfit. No, because I won't die because I'll be protected. Oh, because but I'll the be pigeon, on the run. So you were saved by the pigeon hat. Saved by the pigeon, but then I'll forever become the pigeon girl. And then this is and how the I'll have called to live. The pigeon girl. Yeah. Nominated for three Oscars. Yeah. And then I'll have to like use my pigeon hat to like fight and stuff. Like, you've fought swans on every series of Drag Race you've been on. I have. Speak on it, sis. The black swan is a beautiful majestic me? bird. 
you heard me and I'll okay. say it again. The black swan. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it. That's why I don't black, cancel everyone. The, the black swan is a beautiful bird. Um, it is our national bird of Perth, Western Australia. Um, they are a beautiful, majestic bird, but they are notoriously vicious. And like you'll see them and then they'll just come up to you and they'll just start picking at you. If you have any food near you, good luck. Oh, God. You will die. <laughs> I feel like there are lots of scary animals in Australia. I just discovered the, what was it called? The big spider? The huntsman? No, it had a special, it was a, a type of huntsman that had a special name, Atticus. An Atticus. Oh, I don't know their names. It's just, a very big huntsman. Because in Australia, you don't really like, you, know, you don't learn their names mm. because you just kind of get on with it. You just and live we, your life. Yeah, you do. Like, And then, you know, some people have snakes coming out their roof or in the toilet and Sometimes the snakes get in the car. I had a spider in the car that just did a web one night. Just get on with it. But they're like poisonous and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know what? Life's poisonous. Like, Anything could kill you. Social so media is poisonous. In Australia, <laughs> you'll be fine. Yeah, live your life. Yeah, live your life. You know, I went swimming and there was a shark warning while I was in the beach. Awful. Um, no, nah, but just get out. <laughs> <laughs> You just get out. <laughs> like, Don't, Aren't you supposed to like boop them on the nose if they come up to you? Yeah, but I'm not going to swim towards the shark. I'll go, hi, Mr. Shark, or Bruce from Finding Nemo. I'll go, darling, and then just... Yeah. <laughs> While you're dressed as a sad pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they, yeah, no, like, honestly, Australia has probably some of the most deadliest animals and creatures, but they're also quite fabulous. Okay. You know what animal I find really incredible? Tell, tell me. A turkey. I like looking at their necks. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you for sharing okay, that with us. Like it's their little necks and they've got their little goopy goopies. The little, what are they called? And little giblets. No, giblets are on the inside. Oh, uh, they're little... Um, they've got a name and it's not... I want to say it's a gobble, but it's yeah, not called... It's a gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. gobble. <laughs> Um, chaos. I love this. So I've got. I've done many previous episodes of the Final yes, Frontier. I have watched many of your videos on the um, Instagrams. Interweb. Um, I haven't w- listened to it because I struggle sometimes listening to f- full podcasts. Okay. So you can say whatever you want. You won't remember it, and you won't listen back to it. No, I will this one because it's with you. Because you're in it. Oh, okay. Because we're together. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Um, we're meant to talk about sci-fi things. Yes. So I'm going to steer us. Into the world of sci-fi. Yes, okay. it's a, a swift right turn. I'm also going to cross my legs so that I'm more comfortable yeah. in this giant ice cream. Th- maybe less comfortable is what I discovered that was. That oh, was well, a mistake. I'm not zipped up. Look, everyone. <laughs> Reveal. Surprise, surprise. I'm not the same size as tea coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but but we both got big hearts. We do. And massive cocks. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about sci-fi. Yes, do you have any on. particular loves? Are you... Are you a big sci-fi fan? I would hope so. No, I am. And I, I, I do enjoy myself a sci-fi romp every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I love a fantasy moment as well that blends into a little bit of sci-fi. Yeah, we've discussed that a lot. That We've, yeah. we've just point blank decided sci-fi and fantasy well, they go are the hand same in umbrella. Hand. Yeah. And I think because it's like that un, unreal sort of anything is possible kind of realm. Like yeah. sci- fantasy is probably just sci-fi with wands. Um, that's very different to what we've discussed previously. So my previous decision was that sci-fi yeah. has shiny costumes and screens yeah. and fantasy has not that. But sometimes you have a knight in shining armour. True. Explain but do that. they have a wand? They have a sword. Which is a kind of metal wand, wand yeah. in its way. Mm. Which is a vicious wand. Yeah. And what are your favourites in that sci-fi fantasy overlap genre Venn diagram? Ooh. I haven't thought about this. Um, really put me on the spot here, Tia Coffee. Well, you, you came on a sci-fi podcast. No, I know. <laughs> this, is, this is really I not just, on me. Uh, no, I just think I'm just thinking of those moments. Um, I, I watched the new Doctor Who one. Oh, the new the Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. I watched them and I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was very gay. Um, oh, give me some <laughs> options and I'll tell you if I like them. Well, let's, okay. Do you, do you like Star Wars? Um, I liked watching... I watched the first four. Okay. So the first, like the original 80s. Do you mean three. like in the chronology one to four or do you mean you watched three, four, five, oh, one? three, four, five, one. Okay, right. And then two and one, two, uh, the two and three from the 2000s. Yeah. Um, I struggled with them a little bit. 
what the two and three from the 2000s. Yes. Yeah, that's a difficult, that's a Jar Jar Binks era that's quite difficult to navigate. Yeah. And, and isn't it like, because I was watching a thing about the theory of Jar Jar Binks being like the villain of the whole thing. Yeah. And I find that fascinating. It is. Because I love Jar Jar, but then when I watched that, then I couldn't look at him the same way. You are the only person who I've ever heard say that they love Jar Jar Binks. Really? No, I liked his, because he reminded me of the dinosaur from, um, uh, what's that? The Land Before kid. Time? Yeah. yeah. You know, with Ducky? Yes. Yeah, Ducky was Land my favourite. Land Before Time, sci-fi, talking dinosaurs. Talking dinosaurs. Well, this is the thing. We could talk about that. I love Land Before Time. I used to watch them as a kid. Too emotional for me. I was a very sensitive child, and now I'm a very sensitive adult. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but yeah, so Jar Jar remind me of Ducky, and I always mm. like, the, what is that dinosaur? The one with the... The nose and the stuff. I always found them very Ducky beautiful. from The Land Before Time. Yeah. Uh, Poppy, could we find ducky? out what kind of dinosaur Ducky from The Land Before Time is? Just for more context, so I've really brought Poppy in as almost at this point She's a an co-host. She's co-host, yeah. Yeah. In the last episode, Poppy actually asked me quiz questions about Doctor Who, so had almost as much time on the podcast as I did. Yeah. And it's all part of Poppy's master plan to eventually get her own podcast. But um, if we were making this a sci-fi, there's a villainous character called Jimmy who won't let her have her own <laughs> podcast. Is Jimmy here? No, Jimmy's gone. Oh, Jimmy's gone Jimmy's to a meeting. infamously left. See, villainy. Jimmy villainy. doesn't even care enough about the podcast to be yeah. in the room at the time. Yeah, Poppy rude. has to deal with everything. I'll tell you, actually, I've just had a thought just had a thought to sci-fi mm-hmm. um, and fantasy crossover. I think the... Did you, have you watched the new trailer for Wicked? Uh, yes. That is giving me a crossover of like sci-fi and fantasy and a little bit of steampunk in there as well. Very steampunk the energy. style. Yeah. Um, and I'm very excited for that. I'm a huge Wicked fan. That's my favourite music on the whole time. I think it is rare that 17 you... 17 times. ...have like fantasy musical theatre. Yeah. But I guess that is fantasy musical theatre. Yeah. Oh, it is. And then we had like, and then sci-fi, we have like the Starlight Express. Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror. Oh, Rocky Horror, yes. Oh, you, I love Rocky Horror. I think Rocky Horror is very big in Australia, is it Rocky not? Rocky Horror is huge. We have like, it's currently touring at the moment. Oh. Yeah, and they're doing, and it's like, you know, you go in and they do, they have all the, like a bucket with all the bits there, so you have to throw things at certain times. Oh, like and the toilet say, paper yeah. and cover your head with the yeah. newspaper. Yeah, it's the whole kit and caboodle and they love it. Happens like once a year. Kitten Caboodle from yeah. Drag Race Canada. Canada yeah. um, would you ever want to be in Rocky Horror? And if so, what role would you play? Because I think I can see what character I, I see for you. Who do you see? I think you'd be Columbia. I, would I think love that's because I've seen you tap dancers, Shirley Temple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would love to be Columbia or Magenta. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think I could. Um, I could be... I, I, look, I'm not mad at the narrator either, a glamorous yeah. narrator, because the narrator's really fun. I don't, Usually they have, you know, the usherette at the beginning? Yes. Usually also does magenta. I think yeah. it'd just be camp to do the... Michael Rennie was... That bit that at the start fun. and just do that bit and then sit back until the bell. To bowels. be fair, you know, I would even just do ensemble at this point. Because, you know... Hard choreo for the ensemble. Yeah, but like, but you, you know me, I'm infamously a dancing diva. Famously, um, ballroom skilled. Yeah, I can do the Can't samba. Can't relate. Um, <laughs> you did a really beautiful little um, quick step. Thank you. I'm warm in these costumes. I'm, I'm tempted for sweaty. us to just do the rest of this shirtless. <laughs> yeah, just with my tits hanging out. Nips to the my, wind. My, my bitch tits. <laughs> oh. okay, it's just like this. Are you ready? This is how the interview is. Oh my God, are you just going to have them out? Can I tell you, sorry, I've like... Paint me like one of your prehistoric... Girls. I can't believe you've got your nippies out. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and they've seen me on Drag Race. It's okay. <laughs> oh, that's true, actually. Um, not about sci-fi, but I mean, uh, Jordan likes getting mentioned on the podcast, so I'll mention uh, Jordan. He um, has developed this new thing of like, you know when you like fluff a pillow to like rest your head on? Yeah. He's like pushing my booby fat like like it's a cushion <laughs> to like fluff my tit to like rest his weary head on. <laughs> that is, that's, I don't know. That's, that's a bit upsetting though. I've never wanted to do cardio more in my yeah, life, I, honestly. There was one time my friend Carmen, um, Carmen, come, get, Carmen it. get it, come and get it, yep. shout out to come and get it. Um, she was getting changed and we're doing a quick change and I don't know why. We, it's a quick change. So we had like 30 seconds to get dressed. But as mm. she bent over, her tit just like went down and I just leant over and I just cupped it with my hand <laughs> for no apparent reason. And she's like, why are you cupping my breast? I said, 
I don't know. And she's like, get dressed. So we just got dressed and proceeded to not think about it. Like you were catching something that fell yes, to the ground. Like, yes, just you caught her to stop it from yeah. hitting the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's sisterly. Yeah, because, you know, don't lose your breast. No. But it was just mustn't. attached to her body because it was her skin. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, like, in, in the context of our life, if, like, a, a sponge fell out of a bra or something, you'd, like, go to catch it. Who's using sponges in their bra? I don't really wear... Do you not wear boobies? Yeah. I've got a foam latex tit. Yeah, it's nice. Sounds like a bird. <laughs> Is it a foam latex tit? Yeah. Yeah, good nick of bird watching with my tits. <laughs> Um, so after your experiences with, Cy, uh, uh, with Star, Star Wars, Wars yeah. are you not going to watch the most modern trilogy of films? Are you not a, oh, with a like Kylo Ray Ren girl? And Kyle, yeah. yeah, no. Um, I just, I got, I felt like I got lost in the. Oh, lost. That probably counts as sci-fi. Yeah, sci-fi. What is, well, I'm a, um, I know it's like superheroes, like Marvel, because I'm a big Marvel fan. Oh. Okay, we can talk. I love Marvel. It was a prerequisite of um, mine and Jack being together that I had to watch every single Marvel movie from the start Mm -hmm. and catch back up. And so it was good because it was just before, like, Disney Plus started doing all the TV shows. And I got to experience, like, Endgame when that happened. Oh, fierce. Oh, my God. I was, by that point, I was invested. Um, You have to be. Oh, you have to be. I'm a Scarlet Witch girly. I am Scarlet Witch. Two. I have done a Scarlet Witch number. Have you? Yep. And I have lasers and they're my chaos magic. I've seen your lasers. It's really fun. Oh, that does Maybe work. Maybe we could do that on the tour when we go on tour. Maybe. Have you, are you, have you watched WandaVision? Oh, I've watched WandaVision, yeah, like multiple times. You do the TV shows as well? Oh, yes, I do the TV show. I'm still, I'm in that place where um, for me, like I, I get on board and even if it's not great, mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me. It's just another piece of the puzzle. Whereas some Marvel fans just get really upset with how bad things have gotten. Very angry. Is it Miss Marvel, the TV show? Marvel, I loved Miss Marvel. I thought A lot it was of people great. didn't. I thought it was fantastic and I love seeing her family mm. and I love learning about like her culture through her eyes and seeing how her powers developed from the bands. Did you see it? Did yes, you watch it? Of course. Yeah, and I love that they crystallised from her bands. But- you know, they didn't die. They had crystallized and then they, they were a glamour zombie bitch ready yeah, for the runway. Ready Bury for that. The mama. The house. Mama. The boots. The girl. <laughs> the the with diva. The, bands. the slay. The slaying. Yeah, people really didn't like Miss Marvel. And I thought she was. And, and then in the Marvels, yeah. which now has infamously been panned because it's one of the worst Marvel. No, it is the worst Marvel movie. According to who? According to the box office. Yep. I feel that was unfairly panned because I had the best freaking time watching that movie and I thought they were all amazing. And do you know why that is? Why? Because you're not a racist and you don't hate women. I said what I said. I said what I said. Because that is true. And I thought they were absolutely excellent and I loved seeing little um, Monica Rambeau come out in her photon costume and like because oh, I've said you know obviously then it's translated into me watching like reading comics and bits and pieces mm-hmm. so um, I was just gagged to see her in her photon costume I was like yes yes <laughs> Slay Diva. And then, and then the end. If you haven't seen it, because not many people apparently did. Spoilers. In um, three, spoilers. Two. One. Beast. Beast from the X Men showing up in the end credit scene. I mean, the X-Men are coming to the Marvel fucking universe and I'm so gagged for it. Hannah's really looking out for these extras and, and credits. It seems. Mama's, <laughs> Mama's waiting for the end scenes. Oh, yeah, we're really looking yeah. over the end credits. I'm studying the end credits. Nothing is hidden from me in those end credits, kids. If you were in a Marvel film, what do you think your powers would be? And what would be your <gasps> super Shiro name? Oh, I'm not sure of my name yet, but I have this dream that I'm very much akin to Scarlet Witch because I do love that magical ability to like either shoot balls of power out of my hands, mm-hmm. fly. Okay. I want to fly. I want to be all powerful. And I really want to have a trip into the dark side. You, I was going to say, you're giving pure vig- villain energy. Oh, you want to be all powerful. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Villain. Yeah, because I, no, but I want to be also like, because I felt like for a really long time misunderstood. And, like, mm. people didn't really understand me. And so I would go to bed lo- lots <laughs> and have dreams about flying out my window dressed as some sort of witch and, like, 
growing into this big being and just like blowing up people I didn't like with my hand power balls. That's just gay culture. <laughs> That's, I think I think we've all had that dream. Is that, well, yeah, but you know, because I was like, why do people not like me? I'm really nice. You're all mean to me. Just like shooting out power balls. <laughs> That's how I feel right now, but... You are the power balls responding to comments <laughs> yes, on my Instagram yeah. for me. <laughs> oh my it. God. Yes, I yeah. am. I'm the balls. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I love being able to, f- like, the idea of being able to fly. Mm-hmm. That rocks my world. I love the idea of, like, being able to move things and, like, like um, okay. what is it called? Um, telekinesis. 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 But, like, I, fundamentally, I think I just want to be a witch. Did you watch Charmed? Yes. Okay, I feel like this counts. Charmed and Buffy. Yeah. I was both. Let's okay. Let's start with Charmed. Yes. Which of the Charmed ones would you be and why? Phoebe. Piper. That's a good why answer. Why did I say Phoebe? And that's Alyssa Milano. Isn't yeah, she? Alyssa Milano. Phoebe's no. got the worst powers. No, um, no, no. Piper. Because I'm big sister. Yeah. Protector. Mm-hmm. And I loved when she did this. When she blew stuff up. Or yeah, throw like, stuff. Yeah, throw stuff. And and when she had the kids, and I like you know, her sarcastic answers, and um, like just being a mum, and I really wanted to have sex with Leo. That's very valid. He was so hot. He was really hot. I was actually more into when her sons came back from the future. <gasps> Chris, not Chris, Wyatt for yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was hot. He was really hot. What's his name? Drew Fuller, maybe? I think that was his name. Is that his name? Phoebe, we could we Google a... Drew Fuller Drew to Is see that... if we're correct on that name? Thank you. I'd ask Jimmy to do it, but he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> what a diva. Um, yeah, no, Phoebe had a brief period of time where she gained active powers because she could levitate. It'd levitate, yes, yes, and yes. And then, yeah. do you know, they, they did that whole thing where her powers were stripped because she had a devil baby with Carl. Yes, oh, yes. But do you know why they did that? Why? Because it cost too much to have her on the rig for the levitation. So they were like, we've got to get rid of your powers because we don't have the budget. So they just made up this extra bit of storyline. That is camp. Sad, well, say it's though. always Hollywood. It's very yeah. that. Because it was, it, was, it was plummeting the ratings and they were not sure if it was going to come back, I think. Yeah. And it was after season four or five when that happened. When they did, and then they, they turned them into three blonde women. Yeah, so they could walk <laughs> off and live their lives. But then they were like, actually, people want it back. So yeah, they, brought, so it they back, brought it back. And they had a Big Bang Theory, uh, um, Hayley Kyoko. Hayley Ky- yeah, Hayley Kyoko, yeah. Yeah, it came back. And she was a witch, and then she had a sister, and they were like the bad charmed ones, except there were only two of them. I don't yeah. know why they just didn't have a third one. But um, yeah, that was it really all got weird. Very con- convoluted, really. It did, and their power stopped growing as well. Yeah. I like when they develop them. Yeah, I like that too. And you know, it also gives me flashbacks to my favorite. Um, there's like the last three episodes, I think it's of season six of Buffy, mm-hmm. when Willow just has her meltdown. Oh my gosh, that is so that iconic. And she when, literally. Oh, when Tara gets shot in that window. Very valid. Oh, oh. Poppy, do we have confirmation whether Drew Fuller played Chris in Charm? Drew Fuller did. And Poppy, can you confirm that you also think he's hot or no? Poppy is so Gen Z. Yeah, she's like, she's so wild. Just look again. She's such a girl about town, a girl on the go. It's just so. I've got TikToks to make. Stop. He's okay. Oh. That's fine. Gen Z confirms he's okay. I just really into people with heartbeats and pulses. So sexy. Isn't that? Oh no, that's heartbreaks and promises. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, not into that. No, <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> but yeah, when Willow had her moment, when mm. Tara got shot in that, and then she just turns, and then and then she just becomes like, and she sucks all the powers out of the books. <gasps> uh, that was good. My is the end. bit where she says bored now, and she yeah, flays. and then she flays him. Yeah. Oh, bitch, Gag. wild. Wow, that was like one of those moments where I was like, I just want to be a witch. That's why I'm attracted to it. No, it is pretty fierce. But like, I do think it's kind of slay that like the thing that brought her down was just empathy and kindness from like her... Bezzy Bay. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they, but they, but they, that's what Hollywood does. It always says that, like, even like even through our experiences is with the show, being kind, being empathetic, and being like a, a decent person, for some reason, are not qualities that people like to see on these shows. And then yeah. so there's also, and then, and then when we eventually snap, then we become the bad guy. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult because we're now, we're, we're using, what we're doing here is we are using the fictional work of Buffy, the the character of Willow where she descends into this chaos magic out of out of sadness yeah. and, and being like, having the world against her. Yeah. And all it took was a little kindness and empathy to bring her out of it. But her descent into that you are using as an analogy for our experience. Yes, I am. 
That was good. I know. I love that. I'm a deep thinker. You are. And that's also something that people don't seem to appreciate. Deep thinkers. No. People with their own ideas of how things should work that function a little bit left of the centre of the box. The show that was meant to break us out of boxes that inadvertently places us in boxes. It's I Well, it's largely down to the fandom that plays people in boxes of... Are you a comedy queen? Are you a dancing queen? Are you a fashion queen? Your your answer to that is yes. I yes, it, I, yes I am. And I am more. And I am less. But fundamentally, I am me. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It was it was what will go down in history now as Hannah Condor's iconic I am more, I am less speech. <laughs> yeah. That was like that that is a moment where it will break the internet and it will cause fundamental change across social media where people will post in their bios hashtag I, I am, am more, more, I am, I am less. less. I am me. <laughs> I wish that Dressed was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish people understood how unserious <laughs> this whole situation was. But also deeply profound. Oh, incredibly profound. Yeah. And that's the other part of this, is that some things can be incredibly, <laughs> incredibly unserious, yeah. but so deep that the fabric of society will be forever changed. In this room, there's another universe going on. There's another timeline. You could be sitting here with Scarlet Envy in another timeline. I could. And they're not going to collide anymore. There's not going to be any more insurgences. Are you okay? No. No. <laughs> I was like... I don't know. I was just trying to really bring the sci-fi. Yeah, no. I, I loved it. And it like made sense, but also made me worry. Yeah. <laughs> For your well-being. <laughs> Do you actually believe that there are like uh, multi? We're in the multiverse. There are yeah, multiple universes. I do, and I think there's definitely some. There's some thing. I reckon everyone thinks that they know everything, but we don't. Or, like, or they, they're so adamant that they are aware of what's going on. But mm. there are so many things that happen on a day to day basis that I'm like, that's weird. That's a glitch. There's something going on there. Yeah, sometimes. I do have, like, all these wonders. Like, you know when you have these, like, coincidences? But then I also wonder if I'm someone who reads too Too much much into into things. Because I'm like... I remember one time me and Jordan were ordering a takeaway and we got the same drink and the same dessert and I was like, wow, it's meant to be. I think I read too much into things. Yeah. Or maybe that is, like, the universe being, like... The Matrix. It's a is glitch. it the Matrix? Have you watched the Matrix? No, I have watched the Matrix. Okay, that counts. I enjoyed so let's talk the Matrix. About the Matrix. I enjoyed the Matrix. Actually, I wanted. I don't want to talk about the Matrix. Okay, we'll talk about um, it later. No, I want to talk about Galaxy Quest. <gasps> Gag. Okay. I love Galaxy Quest. Cam. We watched that not long ago, and I think that is the funniest, gayest. Like it's. It was meant to be a spoof, wasn't it? it yeah. But then it was like how they all fell into an actual. <laughs> Real life galaxy quest. Yeah. And I lived, and that they were being watched by aliens for such a long time and they thought they were their leaders. I lived. <laughs> One of my favorites. It is camp. On that similar vein, are you familiar with Red Dwarf? I, I know it, but I don't know it. It's very British in its humor, and I wonder how much Australian humor is similar to British humor because oh, we have very similar humor. Yeah, it's very crossover. Yeah. We do have a crossover. Like the things that go off in Australia, you know, are like, you know, your French and Saunders. And, Love. Yeah. Um, That's very. That's us. Yeah, and your Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> Why Top Gear? Top Gear, because people like cars, apparently. <laughs> oh, I just had heart palpitations. Why? That's the Matrix. That's the Matrix. That's the Matrix. Really... Can we talk about the Matrix? Yeah, do you okay, like the yeah, Matrix? Like, no, I do like the Matrix. I do like the Matrix. I haven't. Se- I only seen the first one, Controversy at Brave. I, I still haven't seen the new one. Oh well, no, maybe I have. There's three, isn't there? Four. There was a trilogy, and then they made a new one. I actually yeah. have seen the new one, have and I just forgot about it. Yeah, I've only seen the first movie. What? Yeah, you need to get into it. The religious iconography throughout is iconic. The whole thing is very heavy-handed, but. Spoiler, well, Keanu Reeves is Jesus, but well, that's for also computers. sci-fi always crosses itself into like a religious space as well. Like June. Yeah. Gives very that. Very religious. Actually quite a lot. Like a, you generally get these kind of like, this is one of the things about like the heroes of like, whether it's superhero or like sci-fi or fantasy, mm-hmm. they're always like either fully or a bit orphaned. Oh, yeah. And like, because yeah. that creates empathy, but also it creates the analogy of like, 
you know, the the Jesus motif of the person. Yeah, and they, they end up becoming like the saviour because mm-hmm. they, there's a people, an under, uh, 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 people that are like the underdogs or the, you know, that are oppressed that need to be released. And then yeah. it's like, and they come out and, you know, this one person becomes the one that leads them to victory. Mama. That, the house, Katniss Everdeen's boots. Katniss Everdeen. Did you, is, 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 is Hunger Games sci-fi? I think it's, it's fantasy. It's definitely, it's a dystopian Teen fiction. Did you watch the new one? Yes. What did you think of it? Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I thought, was okay sometimes. Yes, it was. I watched it on the plane. Yeah. And there was moments that I really enjoyed it. Um, Which was like the actual Hunger Games bit, right? That's the best part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Hunger Games is what, and when all like the water bottles came in, they should put the poison in the water bottle. Oh, bitch. Gag. 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 She's always thinking. Doing, always thinking. But I have to say, what's the bitch that plays the, the bitch, the girl? Uh, Lucy Gray is the character's name, is and she is played by Rachel Z- Ziegler. Yes, slay. Uh, I don't want to be like I don't want to dogpile on Rachel Ziegler because I know she got a lot of hate. Yeah, but honestly, when she did the Relatable. the Katniss, Ever- <laughs> when she did the Katniss Everdeen like the bow thing, yeah. the way she did that looked so obnoxious. I did want to throat punch her. Okay, valid because it's a character that you're talking about, yes, not like the not person. Her, yeah. But she put that in herself. Apparently, it was a decision between her and the director. I think. Well, they should not. Because that was Katniss's thing. Come up yeah. with your own little thing. Do like a high kick and a twirl and a split or something. <laughs> yeah, gag the children. Make it your own. Yeah. Like, I get what she was doing, is, but like, this is the prequel. Mm. And no way did Katniss Everdeen decide to follow Lucy Gray's bed. No. Ste- no. Katniss Sorry, is Sorry, don't, don't you be doing that. Um, but also, it was very heavy handed that I found that there's the bit with like um, Lucy and Snow, and he was like, wow, what's this plant? And she was like, we call it the swamp potato. Some people call it catniss. And I was like, guys, we got to <laughs> like calm down. South swamp potatoes. <laughs> Some people call it catniss. And then they were like, there's primrose in the field. Oh, it's yeah, like, it was all like yeah. calm down. We, we got to. And then I want to know why it's, it was his friend. It was, or was it Snow's sister? Why, why, why were they already calling her tigress? So Tigress was her name, like, but the why, whole time. That was her cousin, uh, Snow's cousin. So then it was just an uh, on-the-nose trick that when they took her and they tattooed yeah. her and made her look she like a She just was like, I want to be a tiger because my name's Did Tigress. Did she want to be a tiger or thought that was, like, a torturous thing? Oh, was it torture? I think it was, like, a torture thing. Oh, okay, maybe because it was her name they did that. That makes yeah. sense, actually. Yeah, I just found the like, I enjoyed it for what it was. But yeah, it was, there was some heavy-handed things in there. And, like, I love a villain origin story, but it just felt like Snow just turned from this nice guy into the bad guy just very quickly. No character development. None. Just gag the children. Yeah. Just... It's like full villain. Yeah. Went all the way to District 12 just to hang out with Lucy. Yeah. Also, where did she go? Is she dead? Wait, well, this is the thing. Where did she go? I was so confused. I hope... I think we're meant to, like, hope that she's just out there living in the wilderness. Because they want to make it another tree. A, 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 Probably. A tree of dips. But some people think, like, one of the theories was that Lucy then goes to District 13 and she becomes President Alma Coyne. <gasps> really? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think the timings work out well enough for that. Yeah. But maybe, because be Alma was, like, Snow's age. Yeah. So. And, then, and she was so hell-bent on, like, taking him down, so. But, like, they didn't really do anything to each other. Like, I don't get it. She kind do you of... reckon they did it? What does she... Yeah, absolutely. Do you reckon he fingered her? Absolutely. Maybe... Do you reckon she fingered him? Yeah. That's yeah. only fair. Right, so Hannah, at the end of every episode, we do a scene. Yes. Um, and we've mentioned Star Wars. We've spoken about Buffy. We've also mentioned Charmed. Yeah. And we also spoke about Drag Race quite a and lot. And we spoke about Wicked. And Wicked. So out yeah. of those five options, what would you like to do a scene from? You pick. I'll narrow it down to three, okay. and then you can choose. I will give you Charmed. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say wicked because uh, the subtext of that is uh, race and racial bias and I don't think I've got the energy for that right now. <laughs> um, so I... W- <laughs> that, that's the scene done. <laughs> Why couldn't you say come from words instead of flying off their handle? <laughs> <laughs> she was so New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flying off the handle. Flying off the handle. Um, <laughs> You can still be with the weather. I think this is the scene. What you've worked and waited for. I think this is the scene. You Poppy. can have all Poppy. you've ever wanted. Poppy, I think, I think she's doing the scene. No, carry on, please. This is your line now. 
Oh, but I don't want it anymore. Right? Bam, ba, da, ba. Look at her, she's wicked. This is really traumatic for me. <laughs> this truly just felt. Get her! <laughs> They, they are. <laughs> they are. They got big out. Um, do you, right, we can do... Dude, let's do a scene. Do you want to do a scene from Charmed? Or do you want to do a scene from Buffy? Just give me a scene. I'm going to try my acting chops. Do you have the lines? Okay. Let's, yeah, Poppy's going to get the... Poppy, you choose. I'm ready. You, you choose, you choose a scene. I'll do it. Because I'll do anything because I'm an actress. We bo- Buffy or I'm Charmed? A okay, we're doing Charmed. Okay. We're the Charmed ones. The power of three. Yeah. Okay. I am I am Piper and Prue. And I'm going to be Phoebe. The pointer on the spirit board. It's moved on its own. Prue and Piper burst out laughing. <laughs> I'm serious. It's spelled A-T. Prue and Piper stare at the spirit board, which is this laptop. Nothing happens. Did you push it? No. You used to always push the pointer. <laughs> My fingers were barely even touching it. Look. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe lightly places her hand on the pointer. Nothing happens. Prue shoots a look, <sighs> then turns to leave. When the pointer, with Phoebe's fingers resting lightly on it, slides from the letter T to the other side of the board and then quickly back to the letter T. It did it again. It Piper, moved. Piper and Prue turn around. I swear, it moved. Prue leaves. The pointer suddenly begins to move again. There. Look. And scene. I'm just, um, just going to get it. You, you saw that, right? <laughs> I don't have any more script. Keep going. You saw that, going. right? Yeah. <laughs> I told you I wasn't touching it. Good for you. Prue, can you come here for a sec? Of course, sister. <laughs> attic. We're in the attic. <laughs> Keep going. I'm going to improvise all the lines in between. This is slow. Um, okay. Oh, oh, I'm actually... <laughs> I'm coming apart. It's a vintage We're in the garment. attic. We're in the attic. Okay. Oh, no, now, now f- for some reason, because the magic of TV, Phoebe has disappeared from the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe has been written out. So now I'm going to be Prue and you're going to be Piper. Okay. You don't have no context of I've what's I've got happening. no context. Okay, here we go. I love this. Don't you think you were overreacting? We're perfectly safe in here. I... Agree. You seem smart and I feel safe and comforted. Girl, it's pouring rain. A psycho's on the loose and Jeremy's not even home. That's so Jeremy. It's never home. (laughs) That'll be cheap. (laughs) So are you, bitch. I saw the pointer move. (laughs) And pointer sister is for life. What you saw was Phoebe's fingers pushing the pointer. She's playing a joke on us. There's nothing in that attic. A crazy, crazy girl. Just kooky girls. <laughs> Just crazy girls. Up in the attic, pointing out. Witches. 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 <laughs> Spells. Insane. Thank you. That was chaos. Um, we could, they did a reboot of Charmed, and I think we were trash. better. <laughs> yeah, we were way it was better. was so trash. Thank you, Piper. Um, thank you, Piper. <laughs> <laughs> the third sister. <laughs> I literally, my brain went, wait, is that her name? No, it's Poppy. It's Poppy. Um, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having it's me. It's Anaconda. Um, I really love your new single. Thank you. I really love you your new happy. album. Thank you. Um, yes, my single's called Heartbreak Through. Um, it's on the interwebs now. You should stream it. I listen to it in the shower all the time. It's a fun song. It is fun and it's uplifting and it's nice. My anthem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful to be here. Congratulations on um, your win. I'm very, very proud of you. I'm excited to see what you do with the world um, now that you. it's yours. Watch me be one of those winners who does nothing for a year. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sleep for a year. <laughs> yeah, literally that. <laughs> I'm going to go on holiday. Ah, well, um, no, I've got plans. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave you now because I'm so hot in this costume. Yeah, but I really want to get out. I love you. You're amazing. Thank you for having me on the final frontier. <laughs>